almost always, 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 unless of course I can. Hi guys, it's Becky again with Home Handy. We are on a really big project today, lots of different things going on. So you're gonna see me dressed in the same outfit across these different videos. In this first one, we're gonna be showing you how to paint the interior side of a front door. This is the front door that we'll be painting today. And you can see that it's got a pretty high sheen on it. You can see it shine in there. So prep work, is always key when you are painting. So when painting a front door, here are your steps. Number one, prep is absolutely key. As I said, there's a good sheen on this front door. So we're gonna wanna do a light sanding across the entire door, then wipe it down really good to get that fine dust off. Then we're gonna paint it at least two coats, and you're gonna see all of the rollers and brushes that we use in the process. This is the type of sandpaper we're gonna be using today. Just a super easy, spongy, grippy um, sander that you can get at any Lowe's or Home Depot. And I'm using 120 grit. Again, all you wanna do is just hit that current paint on the door, kind of rough it up a little bit, just enough to make the paint stick. And when I say just rough it up a bit, this is what I mean. Just kind of get in there, you want to go with the green and then with the green here. And you're going to do that across the entire section of doors. Make sure when you're in these grooves here, you get those really good so that this paint sticks well across the entire door. Okay, the doors have been totally sanded and cleaned. And now we're about to go ahead and start rolling and cutting in and whatnot. And we'll show you real quick what rollers and brushes we use. Okay guys, now it's time to start painting. At Home Handy, we prefer purdy brushes, which you can see there. Um, I almost always, 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 unless of course, I can't, I almost always use a two and a half inch angled brush. And that looks like that. Today, um, Lisa has been working on the doors and so she's been using the inch and a half angled purdy, which you can also use as well. So the first phase that we like to do is go ahead and cut in the tough stuff. So you can see there's lots of different ridges and things like that around the windows. So we go ahead and cut that in um, you want to put a little bit of paint on your brush, not too much, um, just enough to get a good line, okay? And, you know, you're welcome to kind of cut in on the, on the outside. This isn't totally necessary because we're going to be using a, a roller, but also you, you want to get in there and really, you know, cut in all of these tough angles so that when you get your roller out, that's all taken care of. When you're using a brush, make sure you go with the grain. And doors are really weird. So in the center, the grain runs up and down, and on the sides, the grain runs up and down. But at the top, in the middle, and on the bottom, the grain runs horizontally. So make sure you pay attention to that, otherwise you're gonna really see streak marks. And once you've got your cut-ins done you really only need to cut in the really tiny spots don't bother cutting in these little notched areas here in the wood you're gonna roll those out and i'm gonna show you how in one second all right guys so for the next step after you've done your cut-in you're gonna want to roll your door and the rollers that we use these are sponge rollers and they're specifically made for painting doors and trim it's because they're a foam roller so they won't lint up on you and when you're using these, you don't want to use a ton, a ton of paint, okay? Because otherwise it's going to run on your door. So what I usually do is just kind of run it into the container and then kind of kick off a lot of that paint so it's not dripping all over the place. And then you want to run up and down the areas that you've already cut in. Now I'm, I'm, I'm only going to do one so I don't mess Lisa up when she goes to do the door. But here's a little trick that a lot of people don't know. 
Again, you want to go with the grain, and you remember I said in the center it goes up and down. So you want to go with the grain, and you'll see not a ton of paint is going on. If you need to do two or three coats, it's better to do that than to have a bunch of drips, okay? But what you guys can do with this cool little roller, you can do these main sections, but check this out. You can get right up into these little coved areas. That's why I told you, don't spend a whole bunch of time cutting in, because you can come back through with your roller. And then what Lisa and I like to do is also have our little brush nearby, so that if you get any drips, you can go ahead and fix that right away. All right, we'll just quickly kind of get a coat on here. And like I said, you don't need a ton of paint right at the first time you go through. You're gonna come back and smooth everything out. You're probably gonna need a, another coat anyway. And there you go, that's that one whole section done. And if you're trying to do this with a brush, guys, it's gonna take you hours. So don't waste a bunch of time with the brush. Only cut in the really difficult, complex parts and use your roller on the rest. So we'll come back later and show you the final result. I'm gonna show you um, images of the door here, but I wanna reflect on the steps that you're gonna take. Guys, these are really important when you're painting doors, particularly exterior doors, even if it's facing into the house. You wanna make sure you clean that first of all. If you've got a lot of dirt and grime, make sure you use something like TSP or crud or some kind of degreaser. Get it nice and cleaned up. Then you wanna go through, hit it with some um, fine sandpaper. I tend to use 100 to 120 grit sandpaper. Go ahead and lightly sand it down all over, going with the grain of the wood. Then make sure you wipe it down really good or, or vacuum. Actually, we tend to vacuum it off and wipe it down. Um, you don't want any of that fine dust sticking to the door. It makes your paint pop off. Then once you've got it all cleaned up and ready to go, you're gonna use either a four inch or six inch roller with that sponge roller so that you don't get any lint on the doors. It's meant specifically for painting doors. So again, go to your local Lowe's or Home Depot, <clears throat> Sherwin-Williams or Benjamin Moore, and they will have those special rollers for you. It'll say door rollers or door roller pads on there. So grab those, you don't need to use a ton of paint. It's better to put on two thinner coats of paint than one really heavy coat, okay? Uh, you can go ahead and start with cutting in all of your really, really tiny spaces and areas. Don't go overboard on this, guys. Just get the stuff that's really hard to get to. Then go through with your small roller. Roll everything out. Again, not, to, not too much paint. Roll it out, roll it out. Use that thing to all of its advantages, getting all those nooks and crannies. Make sure you have your brush nearby so that you can get any drips, but hopefully you won't because you won't have used too much paint. All right, then once you get everything painted, come back through one more time, use that roller to flush out as many of your brush strokes as you possibly can so that the whole door looks nice and flush. If you're using a really good door and trim paint, which you should be doing, if you're using a really good door and trim paint, even your brush strokes should kind of disappear uh, as the paint uh, sets up, okay? It'll, it should be kind of self-leveling. All right, so I'm gonna show you the door and uh, then we'll be checking out here in just a minute. And here's the final door. You see everything's been cut in nicely, nice consistent coating. This little mark you see here, right here is a shadow. Nice, consistent paint. You don't see any big globs or anything like that. Just a really beautiful door. Okay guys, that's a wrap for us. Hope that you found this really useful. Great for DIYers. For those of you who are out there and think to yourselves, wow, I don't really wanna do that. Please feel free to give us a call. Um, I'm happy to jump on a call, come out and give you an estimate. Our artists, we work hard for you guys. So if you ever need us, just give us a call. I think our number and information are flashing before your eyes as we speak. That's it for today's edition of Home Handy. Thanks so much and hope you guys have a great day.